Hey, uh, FBLA kids who are gone today. I am. Um, I gave the class a note card and we're writing stuff down for this note card. Um, so the first two things that we're putting on the note card is the law of sines and law of cosines and like writing down the formula, but also writing when you know that you need to use this. So we started with the law of sines. We said two sides, two angles is what's involved in the law of sines. Um, and you can use the law of sines when you know you have one group like uh, don't write this down, but like when you do A, B, C, and lowercase a, lowercase b, lowercase c, if you know A and A, you can use the law of signs. Or if you know B and B or know C and C, if you don't have one group, then you can't use the law of signs. You've got to use the law of cosines instead, okay? Um, but you have to have one group in order to be able to do that, okay? Does that make sense? Do you understand what I mean by one group? Okay. Um, law of signs formula is sine A over A equals sine B over B. And keep in mind that like A and B don't nececessarily have to be A and B, it could be C and C or whatever, just as long as you keep the ones that are opposite each other in the right spot, okay? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Like angle A is opposite from side A, make sure you keep those in the right spot, okay? All right, and you'll see a bunch of, there's examples of those on the law of sine section, okay? Law of cosines, which was section 10-1, so we had 10-2 and 10-1. Um, law of cosines involves three sides and one angle. I'm going to say three sides, one angle, and the formula for the law of cosines is a squared equals b squared plus c squared. It's like the Pythagorean theorem, but then minus 2bc cosine of a. Thank you. That's perfect. Okay. That's your formula for the law of cosines. So three sides, one angle. Side, 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 side. These are all sides. You don't have to write this down if you don't want to. But there's my three sides that are involved. And the one angle that I have or that I'm trying to find is that guy. Okay. All right, the thing that you need to make sure is that these two guys are opposite from each other. Okay, those two, the side and the angle that you are trying to find or have, those two have to be in the right spot. Otherwise, the B and C you can mix around, right? We've talked about that before. Okay. Good, good. All right, I'm going to write down this formula, but I'm going to write it down a different way. If you are trying to solve for the angle and undoing that equation, like let's say I'm trying to get A out of there, cosine of A is equal to A squared minus B squared minus C squared all over uh, negative 2BC, I'll say. Yeah. Let's do that. This one is the same formula, but switched around. So like if you're solving for angle A, you can plug it in here and then it's, it's easier to solve for it. You don't have to unwind it. So you're solving for No. So it's for when you're solving an angle. Because like, oh wait, never mind. Subtract the B squared over, you subtract the C squared over, you divide by 2BC. And that gives you cosine of A. Oh, but so this is just the broken This is just one. the same thing again, but flipped around. <clears throat> this one's for solving angle. Okay, now there's a lot of, yeah, this is for solving angle. There's a lot of negatives that are in that equation. I think the, the equation that they gave to you um, was, if you want to write this one down, these two things mean exactly the same thing as one another. Okay, this bottom one just has less negatives in it, right? It's just taking everything from up here and flipping it so that it has less negatives. But those two, be, those two things mean the same thing. So whichever one of those equations you want to plug into when you're solving for an angle for the law of cosines, you can use that, okay? Now, <clears throat> even after you plop in all of your ABC stuff, you still have to do one more thing when you're solving for angle A, and that is to do what? If you're solving for this angle A and you've plopped everything into here, what's the last step that you have to do? 
inverse cosine. I've got to get that co cosine to go away. So don't forget to do that. You have to do inverse cosine of all of that junk at the very end. Yep. You have to do inverse cosine of all of that junk. Okay? So all of those things mean exactly the same thing. Good? Yep. Happy with that? Yeah? Okay. Eh, kind of. Whatever. Right? Okay. Um, uh, yes, we'll do that. Do you guys have a room on this yeah. side? Yes. Yeah. Let's, we'll do it on the back side. So this is the only thing I want you to write down on this side because everything else goes together on the back side. Okay, okay good? Yep. All right. Are we good on that side? Yeah. Okay, let's flip over to the back side. And let's talk about the first thing um, is polar form. versus rectangular form. Oh, I'm out of room. Polar form versus rectangular form. Okay? And this is basically what the, what the rest of the chapter has to deal with. Okay? Rectangular form is A plus BI and polar form is R Cosine theta plus I sine of theta. Okay, and I'm going to talk to you about how to go back and forth between those two. Okay. Now, in addition to rectangular form, I'm going to put something on here that's called component form. Okay, which is another way of kind of writing rectangular, rectangular form. And it's just A comma B in those triangular brackets. Okay, so I'm going to put that under the rectangular form area because component form is just the same just without the I, right? It's just talking about how you go um, in the X direction, how you go in the Y direction. Okay, good? No. Are we taking up too much room already? No. no. no? Not too bad? Okay. Well, that depends on how much more we have to go. Okay, so let's talk about examples going from polar form to rectangular form and then going from rectangular form to polar form. One of them is easy, one of them is a little harder. So I'm gonna say from, from polar to rectangular. Okay, from polar to rectangular. So let's say your polar form is three um, cosine 30 plus I sine 30. And I want to flip that to rectangular form. So here's my polar, and I want to go to rectangular form. Okay, polar form to rectangular form. How do I do that? Mm -hmm. Yep, that's a simple plug into your calculator. So I want to I want to distribute the three through. So you take three times cosine of thirty. What is that? Three times cosine of 30. It's maybe some decimal. What is it? 2.59. Okay. Plus, what's three times sine of 30? Is it two? Or no. Um, um, no. 1.5. Yep. 1.5i. This would be the rectangular form. Or if you're doing component form, that would be 2.59 comma 1.5. Okay, so rectangular form, component form, those will mean the same thing. That's going from polar to rectangular. It's just a simple plug into your calculator. Going the reverse is not that easy, but we'll get to that point, okay? Happy with that? Yes. Not too bad? Yes. Okay. Now, the next section. Do, 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 do. I'm not very good at organizing this. Now we're going from rectangular to polar. Lily, didn't you say you wanted me to use green? Yeah, and I started using green, and then I gravitate back toward pink and purple. I don't know why. It just makes me happy to see those colors. I don't know. Oh. From rectangular to polar form. Because in true rectangular form, that I, uh, that I just rec uh, reflects that it's a complex number. Um, yeah, that's just how complex numbers are set up. It's basically to reflect that it's like a, a vector. Okay. Um, and and uh, another thing is if that I was not there, right? If we took this I off of here, 
to simplify your answer, you would be tempted to add those two together, right? Because if there was no I there, you could add those two numbers together. So it's kind of like to prevent you from adding those two numbers together to distinguish that that's an x-coordinate and a y-coordinate, I guess, if that's the best way to explain it, okay? Um, rectangular form. Let's say you are going, let's say rectangular form. <clears throat> Should we use something in the, not in the first quadrant, because we'll make it interesting. Do you want two, two three, or four? Third, four. Third, three, third quadrant, three, fourth quadrant? Three, we, don't, we don't do a whole lot in the fourth quadrant, though. Four. Sure, we'll do in the fourth quadrant. Okay, so I want, um, let's go 4, I'll make it kind of easy, 4 minus 3i, okay? <clears throat> in component form, what would that look like? 4 comma negative 3, that's component form, okay? So not only can you go from rectangular form to polar form, but you can also go from component form to polar form, okay? Because component and rectangular are very, very similar to each other, okay? So what this is saying here is that I have a spot in the fourth quadrant that is four to the right, let me go, four to the right and three down. Okay, so I'm gonna make my spot here and I'm gonna make a triangle out of him. He's four to the right, three down. Okay, yep. So I made it kind of nice. I made it kind of nice because we know that, that that third side has to be five, right? You do the Pythagorean theorem to find out this, this third side, okay? So I'm just going to write out all the work. Th negative 3 squared plus 4 squared, and the square root of that equals 5, okay? That's that number. In my polar form, which looks like this. I'm going to zoom back, back before. Where does the 5 go? That's R, right? That's the number out in front, okay? So 5, here's my polar. The 5 is the R equals r. And then all I have to do is find my angle. So I have cosine theta plus i sine theta. Okay, good. Are we good so far? All right. So the last thing I have to do is find the angle. And I have to find, can I zoom in? I have to find this angle first. I gotta find that angle first, which is always gonna be that tangent value. Okay, so this guy right here, and I'm gonna do tangent of angle theta is equal to, tangent is the opposite adjacent. So what over what? Negative three over four. Negative three over four, okay? So to get him out of there, inverse, inverse tangent, inverse tangent, inverse tangent. So find what inverse tangent of negative three over four is. Theta will be equal to what? Negative 36.9 degrees. Okay, sure. Okay, negative 36.9 degrees. But here's the problem. If I put 36.9 in here, 36.9 and 36.9, that will not be right. Right? 36.9 cannot go in there. So don't put that in there because we need to figure out from standard position going around the circle, 36.9. Okay? So what do you do? Subtract the 36.9 from 360. So 360 <coughs> minus 36.9 is going to be, I don't know, like uh, 323.1. No, yeah, 323.1. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. That's what goes inside of here. 323.1 degrees. 323.1 degrees. Okay. All right. Um, you guys have requested this if you need to look at this, okay? When you're doing your direction and we find the angle using inverse tangent, I, I think I've written this somewhere before, if you're doing an angle in the first quadrant, you just leave that angle. If you're doing an angle in the second quadrant, after you find that angle, what do you do to it? Subtract it from 180. 180 minus that angle, okay? If you're in the third quadrant, you do... No, 180 plus angle theta. It's not 270 because if we're doing oh, it the angle just, down uh, here, we would have to know this angle in order to subtract from 270, okay? Let me get rid of that. So 180 plus theta, and then in the fourth quadrant, we just did so that one. That one is 360 we, minus that theta. One, could we add to 270 then, technically? No. Why? No, because if you have an angle in the fourth quadrant, it's this angle right here. If you want to add it to 270, you have to know this oh, angle. Does that make sense? Then that would be hourglass. 
Uh huh. Right, because that's an hourglass, not a bow tie. Okay. We have to have bow ties, not hourglasses. Okay. Now, one more thing on here. So we've got that. Okay. When we start dealing with vectors, they they put in uh they they use the words magnitude and they use the words direction. Okay. Which is embedded into the polar form. Okay. Where what's the magnitude? What's, ma what's magnitude in, in this polar form? Five. The five. Magnitude is at five. Okay. And how do we find the magnitude? It's the hypotenuse. It's the Pythagorean theorem. Yeah. To find the, the magnitude. It's the hypotenuse. Whatever helps you. Okay. The direction. When they ask for the direction of a vector, which one in the polar form gives you the direction? The Just the angle. Three. Yep. It's just the angle. And how do you find that angle? Usually? Tangent. Inverse tangent, right? Okay. So it's a, when, when they ask you in terms of vectors, when they ask for the magnitude direction, they're basically saying you're doing the polar form, but you're not writing it in polar form. You're just giving them the information that they want straightforward. Uh, magnitude 5, direction would be 323.1. That's it. Okay. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. What's up? For polar form, do you just leave it that way? Yes, that's exactly how you leave it. This is the answer. That's how you convert to polar form. So going from rectangular form or component form to polar form is a lot harder than polar form to rectangular form, right? Okay. Now, the only other thing is, let's say you have two polar forms that you are multiplying together. That's not good. Okay, so like 5 uh, cosine 30 plus i sine 30, which is what we, uh, kind of what we had at the top, times, I'm going to say times, um, I don't know, 2 cosine, let's say 15, plus i sine 15. I don't care. You can if you want to. This is multiplying. So these are the polar forms that you are multiplying. <coughs> How do you multiply those two things together if they're in polar form? You put them in rectangular sign. No, you don't necessarily you have, have to. You have to get the same cosine and sine, right? What? Don't you have to get the same no. cosine and sine? It will end up being the same cosine and sine, but how do you how do you multiply those two things together? Yeah, so start with the 5 and the 2. That makes 10, okay? Right? Okay? So I just multiply those numbers out in front, but then what do I do with the 30 and the 15? This would be cosine of 45 plus I sine of 45, right? Okay. That's multiply. Okay. Now I'm going to do the, I'm going to use the same thing again, but now I'm going to divide. Divided by 2 cosine 15 plus i sine of 15. How do you divide? You divide it. What's 5 divided by 2? You can leave it as 5 over 2 if you'd like. Or you can write it. Or 2. It's 2. Is it 15 or is it 2? It's 15. It's 15 because you subtract. Right? You're subtracting those guys. Okay. Now, if they are in radians, Pizza you'll find a common denominator. The high school okay. track members, high school track, if you wanted to vote for prom royalty, you need to do that before you leave. Good luck, MJ. Okay. Thanks, Kelly. How's that? that? Does that cover it? Okay. That's all I'm going to have you write down on your note card. Okay. I'll give you some time to work on the review. And uh, there you go. Okay. I'm going to shut the video off. I might, if, if we get into some of the problems, I might start this video back up again. We'll see.